All right, so this video is gonna go over my lac enclosure real quick. There's a link down below to the printables collection that has all the parts, or most all the parts that I used in this build. Um, so I've had this lac enclosure for five years. The original reason I wanted to build it is so I could print um, ABS, ASA, those, those really stinky filaments, and not have to be exposed to that. Um, and so I built this in such a way that there's an exhaust fan going up to my attic space and this enclosure always maintains a negative pressure. That means on the inside, it's lower pressure than the outside because it's pulling all that air up and out. So the only thing happening is air going in, nothing's escaping out. And this has been fantastic for me to print all kinds of filaments without worries of being exposed to those, you know, those fumes and those vapors or whatnot that it puts off. So I'm just gonna talk, uh, talk about this from the top to the bottom. So, Up here, I've got my exhaust port, and you can't see up there is I bought a uh, $5 filter, air filter from Home Depot. It's 20 inch by 20 inch by one inch, and I fashioned a cone that sits over the top of that, and that just that uh, makes it such that the insulation can't fall down from my attic space. And then I've got a, like a quick disconnect there. I got off of Amazon. That rotates like 10 degrees, and you can drop that off. And then I've got this gray exhaust hose I got off of Amazon as well. You can get it in different colors. This comes down to my dampener control. Um, this has a dampener and right now it's open so that there's a, there's a flap in there that's vertical. I had a problem with cold and hot air coming down from my attic space into my office and affecting the temperature in here. And this is taking care of that. So I've got a push button that turns off um, the exhaust fan, the lights in the enclosure, but it also closes that duct when I'm not using the printer. So now it, there's a flap in there that's closed and this is sealed off from letting air flow through there. Turn it back on and that opens back up. And that's done via a Raspberry Pi script, a Python script um, that my, I'll show you the push buttons here in a second. But this has a servo and a small Arduino board under that cover. And this USB power goes back to the Raspberry Pi and then this control pin. Um, if you run a setup like this, you want that you want to power that board off of your Raspberry Pi so there's a common ground, and that way the pin can do its thing, its control pin. Up here on top, I've got some spool rollers. These are Tush spool rollers. They just use cheap uh, 608 bearings, the same size you get in a skateboard. I wouldn't use these for skating, but they work fine for a filament uh, holder. Uh, but I, I printed the set of these when I first got my printer five years ago, and they've been fantastic, so highly recommended. And then I've got my filament pass through there when I'm just running a single spool. Coming over here to the front, I've got my control buttons here again. Uh, I don't have this automated right now, but when I turn this off, it turns off the light, turns off the exhaust fan up, and I'll show you in a second, and then closes that dampener. So I've got a couple push buttons there, and then I've got this dimmer here if I wanna dim those lights, which is really nice at night. Um, having this super bright is kind of annoying, so being able to turn that down is nice. So I've got this on hinges, and if you go on printables, there is a set of hardware for these lac enclosure that lac enclosures that has hinges. I just uh, designed my own for my own setup because I had some custom things I needed to do. But you can there's a design on there where you can just download it and create the hinges for your lac enclosure to open like this, which is really handy uh, to have more access to this room, uh, the space rather where your printer's at. Uh, exhaust fans back here. That's 120 millimeter Noctua, and I've got that on a, a thermal controller here. I got off of AliExpress. It's like a buck or something like that. I'll have a link down below to the item. Or actually, it's in the collection. Um, and this thermistor here, and the the default fan curve on this is going to ramp up that fan to full speed at 95 Fahrenheit, which works for me. Uh, <clears throat> my idea was to keep this fan running as uh, you know as quiet as it can. It only ramps up when it's needed to needs to, and it makes it even quieter in here. Uh, let's see here, as far as the enclosure goes, got some doors here we can open up. And this is all part of the default uh, hardware that you print for the black enclosure. So I've got a thermostat here so I can monitor the temperature in my enclosure. And you can see it from both sides. That's why I kind of have that funky angle. And then this is just magnetically mounted here with a screw mount piece there. And then this comes off as well if you need to take it off for whatever reason. And then I got a Wise V4 camera. This is nice because you can access it when you're out and about with the Wise app. There's no uh, subscription just to check on your camera and record clips. 
there is a camera down here that connects to Prusa Connect. Um, that gives me a view at the nozzle, but I like having this wise camera up here for kind of an overhead view. And I don't have that connected to Prusa Connect, but I use the wise app just fine. Um, as part of putting my printer in this enclosure, I removed the power supply here. I replaced it with a bracket and moved the, the power supply down here under the side and everything passes through that grommet right there. And I have connectors, uh, XT60 connectors for the power and then a couple other connectors for the other wires. So when I wanna take my printer out of here, I can just disconnect all those wires and lift the printer out. All right, so inside here, I've got a paver. Um, the paver is nice because the printer is gonna have a lot of vibrations and stuff from the, the motors and whatnot. And if you have it on this uh, Ikea table, which is kind of, it's a hollow core design, uh, it acts like a drum and all those vibrations and sounds from your printer are gonna resonate uh, through that and it makes it a ton noisier. Putting this paver in place absorbs all those sounds, so highly recommended. Um, you can get those for two to four dollars at any big box store. One thing I would do is grab a sanding block or sanding paper, sharp uh, sand off all the sharp edges if you can, just kind of breaks it off, and then hit it with an air compressor because you can clean all the sand and grit out of this thing, and then you're not going to have that in your enclosure. Um, I did recess it because I needed the height for my MMU. Plus, it looks pretty cool. Um, and after I put that in the table top there i put this piece of wood on the bottom this outer edge has about three quarters of an inch of particle board behind there so all along the edge here i put about five screws in on both sides uh, where this board mounts on the bottom and then just put glue across the middle and that's nice and solid so i don't have to worry about that paper falling through or or uh, starting to push that bottom out okay so moving down here i've got my uh, print print sheets. Uh, somebody did a really nice job on this holder and made it so you can stack them and you just you make as many as you need to and have a long enough screw to stack them and mount them. Uh, works great for stowing your, your uh, print sheets. There's my Raspberry Pi again. Uh, I got those push buttons up there and then I got the stuff that's controlling. And you basically have input output pins. You can configure them for input or output and then use a Python script. So I've got two input uh, for my buttons to turn on and off and that controls the uh, high low level of outputs going to turn on relays. So pretty straightforward script uh, for GPIO control. And then um, I kept this for my tools and I'm glad I did that instead of filament because uh, it's nice to have everything right here. Um, my MMU, I do have my spools off of the lid, but I like being able to lift that, but also use the, the uh, top of the enclosure while I'm printing stuff as a work area. Um, just by dumb luck, um, I cut four inches off the bottom here when I first built this to add height to the top. And if I uh, would have done it different, I probably would have made this about eight inches because I had to recess that stone or that paver and also um, make an opening up there. So the PTFE tube at max height sits in that opening up there and it doesn't hit the sides. So when you're planning the height of your enclosure, ponder any kind of extra stuff and add that height because you're also, if you change your height down the road, you're gonna have to do something about those plexiglass windows. Uh, either replace them or make some kind of spacer or whatnot. One thing I would recommend too, when we're talking about you know planning the height of your enclosure is think about all the different wiring and objects you're gonna wanna have. I had to take off this lid multiple times. You can see a lot of different screw holes just cause I changed orientation over time of what I had in here between lighting and, and other things. Um, and if you can plan that out ahead of time, it'll save you a lot of trouble. I know, uh, like when I put that in the bottom there, the paver, I had to tear this whole thing apart to be able to take that piece out to my garage and cut that hole and, you know, make the mess out there and come back and put everything together, including everything that's connected to the bottom of it. So try to ponder everything you can for your build. It'll save you a lot of pain down the road, um, to be able to plan that out and, you know, make all the holes, drill all the holes, uh, when you're getting ready to assemble it and uh, save you some trouble down the road. Um, so just again, by dumb luck, what I was trying to get at is my bin for my filament fits under there with just a couple millimeters to spare. Um, these are uh, Sterilite gasket boxes. Uh, I think it's model 1933. Uh, the, they're 32 quarts. You can get these off of Walmart, I think like a four pack for 45 bucks or something like that. But they have a gasket around the top, which keeps them fairly airtight which is nice, this little foam gasket here. And then I use this dehumidifier, you know, I got off of Amazon for like 13 bucks. It plugs in, so every couple months, I plug this in to dry it out. 
it maintains a humidity level in there between 18 and 20 percent which is, works great i've never had a problem with moisture with uh, any kind of filament being stored in these bins and i've done that since day one um, one of these bins will fit 10 spools two rows of four and then two stacked on the top with your humidification dehumidic your dehumidification unit um, and again that fits right under there luckily so i could use that space for filament storage have that for my tools all right so real quick i know it's not part of the enclosure but i'll talk about my mmu layout um, this is the mmu3 and when you order it you can either have the option of getting Pru uh, prusa printed parts or you can have the filament shipped you and print your own parts which is what i opted to do and I, I printed these parts in gray so i can better visualize what's going on in here uh you know if i've got parts of filament or whatnot i can see it more easily with a lighter color and this part's really cool this flips open so with one hand uh the stock the the, the uh Prusa design has two screws in there. So this is nice to be able to flip it with one finger and open it. Um, the person that redesigned this and remixed it did a fantastic job. It's really well done. Um, I have had zero issues with this setup. Um, I got my PTFE tube going down to my extruder there. And then on the back, I've got my spool holders outside here on the side. You can see that these tubes come out of the, the MMU and they go into my buffer down below. And if you're not familiar, this holds the loop right here when the extruder has to unload that filament back up to the top. So it goes into that buffer. And this buffer design has worked great. Um, I got a self, I've got a, a tray in there I can put in place when I'm loading it. And it basically takes the filament as I load it up here and redirects it right back out to the MMU. So I basically put the MMU into its loading sequence and then it just waits for the filament to show up at the sensor and then it grabs it. So I can load all five filaments directly from here without mucking with any loop or anything like that. And once I've got it fully loaded up, I pull this out and I'm ready to print. Um, I only can fit four rolls in this space right here. So the fifth roll goes on this holder right here, which sits right here on the lid. And then I also have a bracket on the back there. So the when I put this up there, the uh, filament won't fall when I raise the lid. So that's been, that's worked out really well. Uh, this MMU, setup has been fantastic again the only errors i've had were introduced by me so great solution it'd be nice if they had an ams unit for the filament to hold it but this situation is bulletproof for me so i can't complain so i hope this was helpful and gave you some ideas of how to build your own enclosure have a good one